given leave to make a statement on the US presidential election, which fulfils the criteria set out in Standing Order 24. If other members wish to be called, they should do so by rising in their places and continuing to do so. All members will have up to three minutes to speak on the subject. I would remind members that I will not take points of order on this or any other matter until this item of business has finished. And I call Ms Michelle O'Neill. Gordon, I have can call you and thank you for granting um, this matter of the day. There are very few of us that, um, who were not witness to the unfolding presidential race across the Atlantic last week and its culmination at the weekend when Joe R. Biden was formally announced as the 46th President of the United States of America. I want to extend my warm congratulations to the President-elect and also to the history-making Vice President-elect Kamala Harris as they prepare to take up their office on January 20, 2021. We are inextricably linked with the US through our history and by family and economic links. We are connected by our transatlantic relationships in the field of trade, investment and technological development and our enjoyment of cultural, educational and other opportunities. And indeed, the oldest US consulate in the world is located here in Belfast. The president-elect is no stranger to this island, quite the opposite. He is a friend to Ireland and to proudly celebrates his Irish-American roots, both north and south. Joe Biden is a key supporter of our precious peace process, and he has shown that ongoing commitment, in particular to the institutions established here in the North under the Good Friday Agreement. He comes into office at a time of great threat from the British Government, with Brexit and the refusal to honour agreements that are looming large. The draft Internal Market Bill has been opposed by the majority of Assembly members who voted to reject it on the basis that it constitutes a serious violation of the protocol specifically designed to protect the agreement and the achievements of the peace process, including avoiding a hard border on the island of Ireland. In addressing the grievous threat that we face from a looming Brexit, Joe Biden has signalled his intent to defend the interests of Ireland and to ensure that the progress we have made under the Good Friday Agreement is not undermined. Indeed, Joe Biden is on the record having stated that any trade deal between the US and Britain is contingent upon the protection and respect of the agreement and ensuring that there is no return to that hard border. Sinn Féin will continue to defend the foundation stones of the peace process, including the Good Friday Agreement, and will work with all of those who share those priorities, wherever they may be, in this case, the White House. I look forward to working with the new President and his administration to ensure that the Good Friday Agreement is protected and its transformative potential is fully realised. Our focus will also be on international collaboration as we deal with a global pandemic, which has called, caused untold loss and pain right across the world. I look forward to the possibility of welcoming Joe Biden in the future as the President of the US to the North, where we can assure him the warmest of welcomes. Finally, Can Corley, it would be remiss of me to not pay a specific mention to the history achievement of the Vice President-elect, Kamala Harris. She's breaking new ground, not only as the first female to take up the second highest office in the United States, but also the first black woman and indeed the first Asian American to take this office. Her achievements will act as a catalyst to inspire many women, not just in the US, but also closer to home, with their ambitions and their dreams of joining us in public life. So add more to both Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and thank you for taking this matter of the day. Thank you. And I call Christopher Stafford. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it was encouraging to hear the Deputy First Minister say that she would be extending an invitation and look forward to welcoming the new President, because I recall an occasion when a previous President in the form of George W. Bush visited Northern Ireland, and her predecessor as the Deputy First Minister was welcoming him to Stormont Castle while Sinn Féin activists were protesting on the streets at his presence in this estate, such as the double-facing standard that exists. Regardless of who holds the office of President of the United States, relations between Northern Ireland and the United States of America are important. Unlike other members in this chamber, I don't stand on platforms and denounce America as a force for evil in the world because I don't believe it is. I believe that America is a force for good in the world. I think it's important that we recognise that this is an internal matter for the people of the United States of America. And whilst it is true that they have made their choice, it is our responsibility to work closely with whomever is in office, because Northern Ireland benefits 
from the relationship that we have with the United States. Indeed, a quarter of the people who have held the office of president can trace, or their families can be traced, directly back to Ulster and this part of the island. And so it is welcome. That relationship is welcome because it allows us, a country of nearly 1.8 million people, to punch way, way above our weight in, in regards to influence in Capitol Hill. President Biden, uh, President-elect Biden, secured the greatest number of votes cast for any candidate in history. The candidate who he defeated, the outgoing president, President Trump, secured the second greatest number of votes cast for any candidate in US history. Traditional barriers have been broken down in this election, and it is a welcome uh, thing, it is a welcome development, that someone of Indian and African heritage is to be elected the Vice President of the United States. The cruel racism of the 50s and 60s that existed and was apparent on the streets, particularly of Southern America, is slowly but surely being confined to the past. And those are welcome developments. I welcome the progress that the world's strongest democracy is making, and we all should. So I've said good relations are important. We have special linkages, and this has been an immense democratic exercise in terms of turnout and the levels of support that both main candidates from the Democratic Party and from the Republican Party uh, have secured in this election. We have always had influence, we have always had relations, and it is important that we build upon those. That will be achieved, I think, that will be achieved going forward if we all of us work to adopt a positive working relationship regardless of who holds the office of president. And it's no good to be pro-American simply when your favourite candidate has prevailed. Thank you. And I call Nicola Mullen. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of the SDLP, I want to begin by offering our warm congratulations to President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Our party, perhaps more than most, nailed its colours to the mast over the course of the last four years in calling out what we saw as an interminable march towards a politics defined by division, fear and resentment. A politics that led children to being separated from their families, travel bans on religious minorities and an emboldened movement of racists. It is not difficult, therefore, to empathise with the people of the United States and across the world who do feel like the cloud is starting to break. This was a historic event for a number of reasons. The nature of the campaign, the volume of votes and the election of a woman of colour to the office of Vice President for the first time. We stand today with the Friend of Ireland and Northern Ireland preparing to enter the White House. A president-elect who doesn't just understand the complexities of this place, but is invested in our progress. President-elect Biden once wrote that Northeast Pennsylvania is written in his heart, but Ireland is written on his soul. So this should be a moment of relief. But it should also be a moment of reflection. A moment for Prime Minister Boris Johnson and others to reflect on a strategy that has brought them to the brink of breaking international law in the pursuit of a narrow, hard Brexit. President-elect Biden, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other senior figures from across the aisle in Congress have made clear that any arrangement which does harm to our agreement will jeopardise a trade deal with the United States. That is avoidable, and I am sure every member in this House will use their influence to maximise the outcome for all of our people. We also need to reflect on an environment not restricted to the United States, where people feel so marginalised, so left behind and left out that they are taken in by the politics of resentment and fear. We all have a job of work to dispel that. Mr Speaker, I want to wish the President-elect and Vice-President-elect the very best as they begin to bring in a new administration and bring it together. And I know that we will all be working with them on issues of mutual concern in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. And I call Steve Egan.
Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Speaker. And uh, the Ulster Unionist Party welcomes the election of President-elect Biden and Kamala Harris as well. I need to also start with a declaration of interest because 50 per cent of my family are particularly happy that this result has now come to the fore after three or four quite nervous, of three or four quite nervous days looking at it as well. But I think this is a significant time for us here in the Assembly as we look to new, a change of administration in the United States, because one of the things we do know about the new president-elect is he's at least read the Belfast Agreement. And I think one of the most appropriate things is he does understand not only do we not want to see borders north or south, but we do not want to see borders east or west, because that undermines the Belfast Agreement just as much as anything else. But he takes over the presidency in January at a period when he is leading or is, has to lead a deeply divided nation. And there are many things that the United States has to do to restore its, the faith of the international system and where the United States is coming from. But he has significant challenges, and he needs friends in the international systems to do that. And bearing in mind the issues he has in Turkey, Armenia, Iran, Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, Venezuela, Cuba, one of the most significant issues that he has to deal with is the issue of security. And that is even before he has to deal with Russia and he has to deal with the China. He needs friends in the international system. He needs those friends who bring real hard power to the equation. And one of the things we have to realise is the United States has a massive security challenge. And what we want to see, particularly in the United Kingdom, is we want to see the United States renew its commitment to NATO and renew its commitment to security across the international system. We also welcome the fact that come uh, when the president uh, goes back or the, the new uh, president comes into position, that the United States will sign back up to the Paris Accords. We think dealing with climate change is significant. We also believe that he needs to take strong leadership on the COVID issue and indeed getting to the point where we are actually able to deal with COVID on an international perspective, I think, is one of the challenges that the president massive uh, problems that the president-elect has to deal with as well. So finally, on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party, and I hope all members of this Assembly, we wish the new president-elect the best. We are very pleased to see the new vice president-elect coming into position, and hopefully she truly has managed to break through the glass ceiling, because it's well beyond time that that indeed happened in the United States. But thank you very much indeed, Mr Speaker. Thank you. And I call Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The United States and Northern Ireland have close ties that bind our people together, and the U.S. has been a close friend to the peace process and the social and economic well-being of our region. Alliance Party members have played key roles in developing and maintaining this special relationship. So we congratulate President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris who is the first woman and first woman of colour to be elected vice president in the history of the United States, will inspire people across the world. Mr. Speaker, the president-elect Joe Biden quoted Ecclesiastes 3 in recognising the work he and the vice president-elect have to unite the United States of America. He said, indeed, it is a time to heal. Um, I believe the Alliance Party and indeed the people of Northern Ireland will get fully behind that task and continue to work closely with the people of the United States to ensure that indeed it is a time for healing, a time for peace and a, team for, a time for progress for both our peoples. Thank you. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. Mr Speaker, there is a supreme irony that this House this morning is celebrating the fact that the people of the United States, by a democratic process, are changing their government. The irony, of course, is that this House is the epitome of the very opposite. This House stands for the principle that you cannot change your government, that you cannot vote a party out of government. What we witnessed in the United States was the people of the United States deciding in their democratic uh, fashion and, and right to change their government. What a contrast with this place, where because of the iniquity of mandatory coalition, you can never change your government. You can never vote a party out of government, so long as that party holds on to a handful 
of MLAs. So it is a supreme irony that without the least blush of embarrassment, this House rises to celebrate the fact that others can do what those who have spoken to date determine we should never be able to do, namely change our government. And of course, the absurdity of our system of government is further illustrated by the fact that if they had the system we have in the United States of America, then we would have joint presidents Joe Biden and Donald Trump. How absurd would that be? How dysfunctional would that be? It's dysfunctional as a stormant, of course. And yet that is the system. Moment, could I just remind the member that the matter of the day was agreed for to address the US presidential election. Could you stick to the motion, please? Well, I thought I was. I was drawing the contrast. The people of the United States have been given the fundamental democratic right to change their government. We are denied it. I was pointing out the people of the United States will have a new powerful president, we, uh, rather than a joint president. We are denied that. So I think the parallel, the point, is, act, is exactly on point, that the democratic exercise that many are celebrating in this House is the very thing denied to this House and to the people of Northern Ireland. As for Joe Biden, I do hope that he will come to the realisation that he needs to temper his overt nationalist empathy if he ever hopes to have any positive influence in Northern Ireland. And he needs to recognise and accept that Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom because of the will of its people. American people have expressed their will. Now it's time for their president time's up. To, to acknowledge our rights. Members, time is up. Thank you. And I call Jerry Carl. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to congratulate the working class and all minorities uh, in the US for, on their second of the racist, bigoted, homophobic champion of the rich and wealthy, Donald Trump. Trump embodies everything that's wrong with modern capitalism, oppressive, reactionary, corrupt, and fully committed to increasing the riches of the wealthy against ordinary people. He has, for the past four years, encouraged and emboldened a dangerous rise of the far right in the US and across the world. This election was, in my opinion, about giving Trump the boot. We should celebrate that, uh, and democracy must be upheld against Trump's attempts to overturn it. And I call, Mr. Speaker, on the executive to immediately demand the current president cease efforts to overturn the democratic process. And if he refuses to do this, we should break all diplomatic ties. Trump is acting like a spoiled child, throwing his toys out of the pram. So many millions rejected him, and uh, he should do what is expected of him and step aside. Trump claimed to stand up for working class Americans, but did nothing to improve their lives and actually made them far worse. This election, like I said, was all about putting Trump out, uh, and for me, never about putting Biden in. Uh, there isn't much good to be said about Biden, except for the fact that he isn't Donald Trump. He is, in my opinion, an uninspiring champion of the status quo. The fact that he only just ousted a president whose coronavirus policy resulted in over 200,000 deaths speaks volumes to the limitations of the unimaginative, uninspiring, centrist approach to the democratic establishment. Joe Biden has, Mr. Speaker, been part of the U.S. establishment for years. That establishment has eviscerated working-class communities across the U.S., and he has cheered on the U.S. war machine in the Middle East for decades, time and time again. He has declared himself an opponent of the Black Lives Matter movement, and he was, on the, uh, he was the candidate wheeled out to stop the progressive, radical Bernie Sanders from breaking from the big business interests of billionaires in the US. Those who think Biden is a progressive that is a friend of working class people in Ireland are frankly living in fantasy land. Mr. Speaker, I hope for real change in the US, uh, and real change in the US lies with those celebrating and uh, demonstrating on the streets. Those who have demanded Black Lives Matter, health care for all, and raising taxes for the super rich. There is hope in those who voted for socialist candidates like AOC and others in the US, uh, the rest of her squad, and Bernie Sanders. So let's enjoy Trump's demise and double down on our efforts uh, for international solidarity and fundamental change in America, in Ireland, and across the world. Thank you. And I call Matthew O'Toole. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, and thank you for taking this matter of the day, um, and thank you to the Deputy First Minister for requesting it. Um, lots of people who heard the member for North Antrim excoriate the um, uh, people here for welcoming the 
defeat of Donald Trump uh, will be astonished. Um, it is the case that there is hope and uh, delight, frankly, uh, around the world that someone who has been a, um, an appalling influence on democratic norms, um, <clears throat> on democratic norms, the civilised world and how we go about politics across the world uh, has been removed from office. Um, but let's focus on the positives. Joe Biden um, cares about Northern Ireland. He cares about the entire island of Ireland. Indeed, I would go so far to say that he cares about uh, stability and um, good government across these islands and across the continent of Europe. He is, in that sense, good news for everyone across these islands. It's been said that Joe Biden um, is a friend to Ireland, and particularly to this part of Ireland. That's correct. His great-grandfather, his great-great-grandfather, I believe, left the Cooley Peninsula to travel to Newry to get the boat to North America around 150 years ago. It would be great if uh, Vice President, uh, President-elect Biden was able to return and see what we hope to be the, the developing narrow water bridge at some point in the, in the years in the future. But let's be absolutely clear, we've had a horrible few years of coarsening discourse, increased divisiveness, not just in North America, but around the world. Anybody who thinks, as some have reflected, that it doesn't, it's not our concern, it's an internal matter for the United States who leads their country, hasn't really been paying attention to the awful increase in divisiveness, in horrible rhetoric that, um, that, is, that, that has gone along with the, with the Trump presidency. So that's why people across the world are pleased and relieved to see uh, Joe Biden take office. They're also pleased to see the transformational and historic election of Kamala Harris to the vice presidency, the first woman to be elected to the vice presidency and the first uh, woman of colour to be elected to that office too. Uh, Mr Speaker, Thomas Jefferson uh, said that every uh, man, uh, he, sadly he was saying men in those days, had two countries, their own and France. Well, these days many of us have two countries, our own and the United States, and that's because the United States inspires and sometimes depresses us all. Well, today, this weekend, has been an inspiring weekend for those of us who look to the United States. What the United States has done in relation to Northern Ireland has been critical, and let's hope that the influence of the new president will be felt, not just on this island, but across these islands in the months and years to come. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you, and I call Daniel McCrossan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I too would like to echo the words of members across the House in congratulating President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect uh, Kamala Harris. Uh, I think this is a, a great moment of hope uh, in very dark times. Uh, across the world, we have seen how Trump's influence has caused considerable issues for the, particularly the Irish-American relationships that exist. Uh, he was a, a reckless leader uh, in a very challenging time. But what I do find interesting uh, in listening to the contributions of this House uh, is the remarks by both Sinn Féin and the DUP. Uh, it was the one campaign that I've seen them uh, united on uh, in that uh, when you consider President Trump uh, attended previous uh, Sinn Féin uh, fundraising dinners in America and then you see pictures of uh, DUP MPs holding Trump's flag uh, that they're on the one page uh, on that particular issue. Uh, personally, I'm delighted to see Trump vacate the, the, the presidency. Uh, it'll be an interesting a uh, few months ahead uh, to see how this uh, all works out. But one thing is clear, uh, it is the right time for uh, a leadership, uh, of Kim the leadership of Kamala Harris uh, and also uh, Joe Biden. And he sends out a powerful message, never give up. He has stood election for president three times and on the third occasion has managed to succeed. All of us were glued to our screens for the last uh, number of days. I know I certainly was, uh, and I found it fascinating just to see uh, how uh, the votes evolved across the various uh, states. It is a deeply divided country, but I do believe uh, that uh, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris will do all they can to unite uh, the country. They sent be sending out that very powerful message. And it also heartened me very, very much uh, to hear uh, President-elect Biden cite the words of Seamus Heaney and also put on record on many occasions that he will do everything he can, if elected President, to protect the Good Friday Agreement and to prevent 
as Colm Easton said, violence to the Good Friday Agreement. It is very clear that the DUP were supporting Trump to use him as a vehicle, uh, as Brexiteers, uh, to get the outcome that they so desire. I am very happy and hopeful uh, for the future with a President and Vice President of the calibre, standard and, stand, uh, uh, and discipline of Harris uh, and Biden. And, uh, I congratulate them both and look forward to them visiting uh, the island of Ireland, north and south. Thank you, Nicole. Jocelyn McNulty. Congratulations, President-elect Joe Biden. His election was a victory for persistence, for inclusiveness and for enduring decency. His election was a victory for democracy and, most importantly, his election was a victory for hope in these dark times. We are all here in Ireland very excited about the implications of this for our island, for the Good Friday Agreement, and for Balna and for the Cooley Peninsula. When we get through this pandemic, there will be some crack in Lily Finnegan's on the opening night, celebrating the success of President-elect Joe Biden, a Cooley man, a Balna man. My young father is especially thrilled because it was Philadelphia that got him over the line and my grandfather met my grandmother in Philadelphia. So on a personal note, my family are thrilled. Congratulations, President-elect Joe Biden. Okay, members, that concludes this uh, item of business. Can I ask members to take a raise for a moment or two? And could I remind people that when we're asking people to, change, to take a raise uh, in the, between each item of business, it's not just about preparing the chamber, but it's also to make sure that